Hello, good day. Uh, I'm going to explain about email security and PGP. So what is email security? Email security is dealing with uh, issues of unauthorized access and inspection of electronic mail. This unauthorized access can happen while an email is in transit as well as when it is stored on email servers. Email has to go from many untrusted servers to reach to its destination and one can intercept or modify it to harm the sender or to make some profit as well. So we have confidentiality, integrity and availability for email. And confidentiality is just making uh, email should be only viewed by the person it is intended to. And integrity, like original content should be received by the receiver. Availability, a uh, receiver should be able to access the mail anytime he requires. So we have about three steps to secure our emails. And two of them are just general, which is uh, security at sender side, uh, and also security at receiver side. Then uh, the third one, uh, which I'm going to concentrate more, which is secure transmission of emails. Okay, then at uh, security, security at sender side, these are just uh, general and it can be implemented by non-technical person. So use incognito mode while sending emails, while sending emails. So this one is just uh, trying to help like uh, the sender not like people not to view the history uh, or the searches history of someone who was using the laptop, but it doesn't necessarily uh, prevent one from viruses or malware. It's just preventing someone from viewing uh, like your previous history. Then we can also like avoid using public computers. So at security at the receiver side, Avoid downloading attachments from unknown senders. Check email headers to verify identity of the sender. So the third one, which is secure transmission of emails. There are two transmission uh, secure modes that we can use. Uh, one is PGP, pretty good privacy. And the second one is SMIM, which is secure multi-purpose internet mail extension. But on this video, I'm going to just explain about PGP, which is pretty good privacy. So pretty good uh, privacy provides a confidentiality and authentication service that can be used for electronic mail and file storage applications. So it is free. This, uh, uh, this PGP is free worldwide, and it is based on extremely secure algorithms. We have about five services that uh, PGP provides, which is authentication, confidentiality, compression, email compatibility, and segmentation. So firstly, I will describe about PGP authentication. And from this diagram, as you can see from the arrows, we have source A and the to the right, we have destination B. So source A uh, is same as um, sender side. And also destination B is same as receiver side. So sometimes I'll say source A or I'll say receiver side, the sender side, like this interchangeably. So from the diagram, we can see like the box with M. It's uh, representing the plain message that we want to send to the receiver. So the message first, it is put through the hash code, the hash function, and we get the EP. And EP is public key encryption. Then that public key key encryption it is encrypted using the secret key of sender a then that message and that encrypted message it is appended together or concatenated together to then we get this result then from there we apply the compression function and we get this box which is um, shaded inside so from there now the message is now to the receiver side. So from the receiver side, the receiver has to apply the decompression function and he gets like the message and also the uh, hash message as well. So the hash message 
it goes through, it is decrypted like using the public key of sender. And that one, the message also passed through the arch function and the two results will be compared together. So classical scheme of digital signatures, which consists of ashes and inverse, asymmetric encryption, cryptography. Encryption process with the private key of the sender and decryption with the public key of the sender, not to provide confidentiality, but send together the plain text to guarantee authentication, data integrity, and non-repudiation. So PGP confidentiality is the second service that I'm going to explain again. So the same uh, to the left, we have the source A, and to the right, we have destination B. So source A is the sender, and destination B is the receiver. So from the message, this one, it doesn't apply the ash function, the ash function, but like it applies the compression functions. So for the message is um, put through uh, or applied the compression function. Then this one uses like symmetric and key because like the same key that is that is being used with the sender is the one also which is going to be used by the by the receiver. But like for us to send that key, we need to encrypt it so that through the trans uh, transmission, no one can access that key. Uh, and decrypt the message that we are trying to convey. So it is encrypted using the public key of the receiver. Then it is appended together with the message that has been um, put through the compression function. So now we have the message here, like now the message is uh, at the destination side. So at the destination side, uh, we are supposed to apply to decrypt the message using the secret key of receiver. And we compare together with the one which has been put through the decom uh, decompression function. So we see uh, the message. So combination of symmetric and asymmetric uh, cryptography. Uh, the symmetric one uses 128-bit uh, random session key to encrypt the message. The asymmetric one uses the public or private key of the receiver to encrypt or decrypt the session key. So now this is now the combined um, PGP diagram, which is in core, which is both authentication and also confidentiality. So we have two boxes. One box is uh, shaded in red and the other one is shaded in blue. So the one shaded in red is authentication and the one in blue is uh, confidentiality. So to the sender side, we apply authentication first, then confidentiality last. But when the message reaches the receiver side, we apply confidentiality first, then authentication last. So this one is the same explanation that I was giving from the previous uh, from my previous explanations uh, like we have the message and it goes through the hash function and we get EP EP which is public key encryption so after the message has been encrypted it is appended together with the plain text message then after it it is appended together with the one which has been encrypted we apply the compression function now we, we are doing confidentiality and that's when i explained that like we are supposed to use same key at the source and also at the destination but like we have to encrypt the key so we encrypt using the public key of the receiver and we append together with the one which hasn't been uh, encrypted so now we are at the destination side so we start with confidentiality first and where we are de decrypting uh, the DP, which is uh, public key decryption with the private key of receiver. And we get DC, and DC, it means uh, convectional decryption. So that one, it is put through the decompression function, and we get the message. So for us to compare 
the message is put through hash function and the hash message is de is decrypted using the public key of sender so and the results will be compared together so i have been talking about deep uh, pgp compression so compresses the data before encryption then compression is done after signing which is locking with session key and it uses zip compression algorithms there are many of them they are lossless uh, compression algorithms and there is lossy compression algorithms the difference between the two is just that like lossless it doesn't um, you you don't lose your data but like with lossy you can lose your data because it removes some of the uh, some of the data in the message so it is better to use lossless compression algorithms then pgp email compatibility this is this uses like radix 64 algorithms for compression so binary data is obtained after applying pgp then it is uh, converted to us uh, to able to send it over mail so we have to note that pgp divides big emails in smaller sizes just before sending which is segmentation i explained i already mentioned segmentation in the other slide where i talked about pgp services so this is the last service of pgp so it's just like big emails are divided into smaller sizes before they are before they are sent to the receiver so this is the summary of the algorithms that can be used so for digital signature we can use dss or sha together with sha or we can use rsa together with sha then for message encryption we can use cast or we can use idea we can use triple des or we can use uh, together with delphi hellman or rsa then for compression we use zip for email compatibility we use radix 64 convention uh, it is good to note that like there are many open source clients that we can use that also supports uh, B, uh, PGP uh, and like there is Mozilla Thunderbird, there is email and, and there is also Mozilla Firefox and there are many also PGP applications and the first one is Enig Mail. Uh, this one it is an extension for Thunderbird and other Mozilla based mail clients and it allows you to encrypt and uh, digital sign emails using the open pgp standard then we have Gino pg and last we have mail mailvelope so these are pgp applications that i just took as examples so thank you so much